Wondering how that plastic box on your counter transforms a rock-solid burrito into a piping hot masterpiece in mere minutes? Well, it all boils down to science. We're talking about the electromagnetic spectrum, the same family that includes radio waves, light shows, and even x-rays. Microwaves are invisible to the naked eye and at a specific frequency. This allows them to do some pretty cool things to certain materials, like cooking your food. So let's see how microwaves are made. Microwaves might seem complicated, but they're designed surprisingly straightforward. The control panel, circuit boards, and motors work together as the brain of the operation, hidden behind a strong metal casing. This casing's attached to the metal cavity where your food sits and gets hit with heat waves. A special component called the magnetron generates these microwaves. But for cooking, a fan called a stirrer helps spread the waves throughout the cavity. No one wants their food to be hot and cold. To achieve a sleek finish, a special technique involving electricity applies a long-lasting coat of paint. Safety is obviously super important, so features like overheating protection for the magnetron are built in. The outside of your microwave is a tough shell, typically a single piece of metal wrapped around the whole unit. This strong exterior protects the inner workings. Inside, the walls and door are made from galvanized steel or even stainless steel for durability. These are often coated with a light-colored acrylic enamel to make it easy to see what's cooking inside. The bottom surface, where your food sits, is usually made out of ceramic or glass for easy cleaning and heat resistance. Tucked inside the microwave are the electrical and mechanical components that make it all work. There are timer motors that keep track of cooking time, switches that let you choose settings, and relays that send signals between different parts. But the MVP? The magnetron. This metal tube creates the microwaves that cook your food. It works with a metal waveguide that channels the microwaves, and a stirrer fan helps spread them evenly throughout the cavity. To connect all these parts and keep them working together smoothly, there's a network of hardware inside the microwave. This includes metal components like gears and screws, and plastic parts like belts and cables. The process starts with making the cavity door. Powerful machines called metal forming presses quickly stamp out the shapes, churning out about 12 to 15 pieces per minute. These pieces get deep cleaned to remove any dirt or oil. Once clean, the metal parts receive a special treatment with zinc phosphate. This step prepares the surface for a process called electrodeposition, which essentially uses electricity to paint the metal. The parts take a quick dip in a paint tank charged with 200 volts for a few minutes to get a thin, protective coat. To make sure this coating is extra tough, the parts then go through a baking process where the paint cures at high temperatures for about 20 minutes. The door gets its own finishing touch after being painted, a special metal plate with tiny holes is attached to the window area. This design allows light to pass through for visibility while reflecting the microwaves inside the cavity. But the door won't be attached to the cavity just yet. That happens later during the main assembly. A tiny battery with a magnet wrapped around it. That's basically the core of the magnetron. It uses electricity to create a special field with the magnet's help. To keep things cool, the magnetron has fins and a built-in safety guard to prevent overheating. On top sits an antenna, directing invisible microwaves out of the magnetron. These microwaves then travel through a metal tunnel towards the cooking area to heat your food evenly. And to make sure the magnetron doesn't get too hot, a fan blows cool air across it. Now that we've seen the creation of the body, door, and the powerful magnetron, it's time to see how these parts become a unit. This process is called the main chassis assembly. It happens at a workstation with a special holding device called a pallet. The process begins by placing the main chassis onto the pallet. This chassis acts as a foundation for the entire microwave. After the main body's in place, the metal box where your food goes gets screwed on tightly. This box becomes the heart of the microwave. Then comes the door with its special see-through window that lets you see your food but keeps the microwaves inside. Hinges are used to attach the door to the box and the body, creating the familiar opening and closing mechanism. The most important part is then added, the magnetron. 
Once it's on, a metal tube called a waveguide gets connected. This tube acts like a tunnel, carrying the microwaves from the magnetron to a special fan inside the box. So putting all these parts together is what creates the core function of your microwave. The magnetron makes the microwaves, the waveguide delivers them, and the stirrer fan spreads them out for even cooking. Remember how we mentioned a special fan that helps cook your food evenly? This is the stirrer fan. It's typically mounted on top of the cavity and there are two ways manufacturers achieve this fan's rotation. Some microwaves utilize a pulley system. In this setup, the fan borrows the power of the magnetron's blower motor to spin. Other manufacturers go for a separate stirrer motor attached directly to the fan for a more independent operation. Once the fan's in place, a stirrer shield gets screwed on top of the entire assembly. This shield acts like a protective cover, preventing dirt and grease from entering the waveguide. Why is this important? Any debris in the waveguide could potentially damage the magnetron, the heart of your microwave. The control panel acts as the brain of your microwave. Pressing the cook button sends a signal to a relay and timer, while the defrost button activates a dedicated defrosting cycle. A timer bell chimes when cooking is complete, and a light switch lets you see your food. Most importantly, interlocking safety switches near the door prevent the microwave from operating if it's accidentally opened. The finishing touch on your microwave is the front panel. This user-friendly interface allows you to select various cooking settings and features. Behind this panel lies the control circuit board with connections to all the different components. When you press a button on the front panel, the circuit board interprets this signal and activates the appropriate functions in the correct sequence. These connections are made through a network of plug-in sockets and cables, ensuring everything communicates smoothly. The tough exterior shell of your microwave is typically made from metal. This metal is formed and shaped using a specialized machine called a roll former. Once the outer case is complete, it's carefully slipped over the pre-assembled microwave oven, like putting on a jacket. Finally, the case is securely bolted to the main chassis, finalizing the core structure of your microwave. With the core components assembled, it's time to ensure everything works perfectly. Power cords and even dial knobs are attached to the oven. Then, the real test begins. Manufacturers run them continuously for a staggering 50 to 100 hours. This helps identify any potential issues before it reaches your home, ensuring you receive a reliable appliance. Safety is a top priority. Microwaves emit radiation and strict regulations limit the amount that can leak out. After passing the tests, a palletizer robot steps in. This automated system records the model and serial number of the oven for inventory purposes. Finally, the microwave's carefully packaged, labeled, and shipped off. It's ready to become a trusty appliance in your home. And that's all from us. If you want to know how other appliances are made, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. Till next time, thanks for watching.